Hello everyone! In the last section we talked about this kind of an intro to Venn diagrams and for the most part we talked about um, Venn diagrams with two sets but this time we're going to introduce three sets. I think actually we talked a little bit about three sets and one example in the last section. I just kind of wanted to throw it in there so it's not super, I don't know, uh, surprising in this section I guess. But yeah, we'll talk about Venn diagrams with three sets. It makes it a lot more complicated but as long as you, I don't know, you kind of follow the procedure and uh, definitely watch all the examples on this video. Um, you can always come back and try to model any homework problems you're doing kind of uh, with, in these types of ways that we're going to go over in this section. So it's a good thing, one good thing is that there's not a lot of new theory. There's no new definitions or anything like that. It's all the same definitions and symbols as the, as the last section, but now we're kind of... I'm um, throwing in a third set, which complicates things a lot. So the section is called Venn Diagrams with Three Sets, and then Verification of Equality of Sets. That's kind of, I guess, a new topic. And that is, kind of plays a smaller role in this section. We'll talk about that in a little while. But first of all, they want to they want to kind of outline how do you go about constructing a Venn Diagram with three sets. Let's call them A, B, and C. And notice in this, this uh, Venn Diagram over here, the really general one, it's called Set A this circle, set B this circle here, and set C this circle. And they've uh, labeled all the sections of it. So notice Roman numeral 1 is this area in A, but not in B or C. Roman numeral 2 is in B and A, but not in C. Roman numeral 3 is part of B, but not part of A or C. And then where's 4? In this area here, it looks like it's part of A and C, but not part of B. And then 5 is right in the very middle of the entire diagram. That's that's probably what you're looking for whenever you do these problems first. That's the part that's the intersection of all three, A, B, and C. And if you know the the thing that goes in there, that's going to be kind of the key to unlocking this problem. That's where you'd want to start, is in the middle, and kind of work your way out. And then uh, the sixth area of this diagram is here. That's the area shaded by, or sorry, the area shared by B and C, but not A. Area 7 is this area down here, part of C, but not part of A or B. And then the last area is area 8, which is in the universal set, but it's not part of A, B, or C. So okay, let's, let's just read these, um, these steps together. Let's see, step 1 says, determine the elements in region V, which is 5. Like I saw, that's what I was saying earlier, is that that portion right in the middle is the most important part. If you know what goes in there, that kind of is the key to unlocking these problems. So we're going to put whatever we know in there, hopefully we know it. And then we're going to, from there, kind of work our way out. So that's step one. Step two, let's try to determine the elements to be placed in region two, which is the intersection of A and B, but not part of C. Um, so again, you're kind of trying to work your way out from the middle outward. Uh, the elements in this set belong to regions two and five. Wait, where are we? Two and five. Place the elements in the set A intersect B that are not listed in five. Yeah, and a lot of, I think a lot of these directions are kind of maybe don't make a lot of sense right now because we don't have an example in front of us, but maybe as we do examples it'll make more sense. Um, that's pretty much the idea. Is start in the middle, um, area 5, figure that out, and work your way out. So right outside of area 5, notice our... Let's see, I'm going to try to find a different color here. Areas 2 and 4 and 6. So those would be nice to know after you've filled in area 5. And then once you know those, then you're going to work your way out to these larger areas, 1, 3, and 7. And then probably the last thing that you'll know, well, usually the last thing is area 8, the outer region that's not part of A, B, or C. Um, so let's see, what's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what step 2 says. Step 3 says, yeah, step 2 says kind of find, find what's in regions 2, 4, and 6, like we said, after you find what's in region 5. And then step 3 kind of says, alright, now you're working your way out to the larger parts of the circles, area 1, three and seven is what you want to find next if possible um, and then area eight comes last so pretty much all it's saying is you want to go for those regions figure out what they are in in the order of five and then two slash doesn't really matter what order these guys are in two four six as long as they're there somewhere so first five and then those three and then you want to find the outer regions the one the three and the what was it seven okay and lastly you'll find what's in region eight that's usually the idea. Yeah, start in the middle and work your way out. Um, and then let's see. So we'll do a few examples where we try to draw a Venn diagram of three sets as described there. But then later on we're going to try to, as the title of this section talks about, 
determine whether two sets are equal. So later on we'll be doing this. We'll list the elements in each set, if possible, and compare. So that's pretty much it. If they say, hey, are these sets the same? Well, I'm going to try to list all the elements in each set and see if they are. Um, if this is not possible, then we'll draw the Venn diagrams of each set and compare the diagrams. You kind of have two uh, methods. I guess if you can explicitly write out the elements in that set, then, that's, then you just write them out and compare. But for some reason, if it's not possible to write out the elements, we'll draw Venn diagrams and then we'll see. We'll compare the Venn diagrams. All right, but that's for a later example. So first, let's kind of focus on what was in that box up there, how to fill in a Venn diagram with three sets. So let's see, example one says, construct a Venn diagram illustrating the following sets. you got the universal set. It's got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, L, I. Oh, sorry, that's the capital I. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> capital I, J. And the set A has C, D, E, G, H, I. The set B has A, C, D, G. And the set C has C, F. That's supposed to be an I again. I, J. Um, and I think we actually saw an example sort of like this in the previous section. So let's see. First, I'm, I'm going to draw... Sorry, I, didn't, I know I didn't leave a lot of room. Sorry about that. Um... So I'm going to draw the box for universal set, one circle for set A, one circle for set B, and a circle for set C. And you kind of try to make them large so that you can fit everything in there. And then it, it probably helps, I mean, if you have a lot of different colored pens or markers or crayons or whatever, whatever you have, it would be kind of nice to label <clears throat> A, B, and C as different colors. But if not, it's okay. I'm going to use different, a different color, though, to put the um, elements in there. So I think, first of all, the universal set... That's not going to really help us. That's kind of the last thing you want to do, like we said, is that'll tell us what's in the last, the outer region, region 8. I think what we want to do, again, is we want to fill in, what would we say, region 5 first. Region 5 is what all three have in common. So let me look at um, set A, B, and C. And Do they have anything in common that's in all three of them? Well, I noticed the letter C is in all three of them. So that's one thing. Sorry, let me zoom in here. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, what else is in the, all three of them? Is D in all three of them? No, it's not in C. What else? What else? Is E in all of three of them? No. What else is in set A? G, H, I. Are any of those in all three sets? No. I think C is the only element that's in all three sets. Alright, so we got that. And what would we say next above in the steps? Then we want to fill in region 2. We got that done. Region 2 now. What was that again? That was the area that B, A and B um, have in common. So I'm going to look at sets A and B and see what they have in common. But keeping in mind that I've already filled in the letter C, so I'm not going to look for that. Do A and B have anything in common besides that guy? What does A have? D, E, G, H, I. D and G are also in B, so those are going to go in that area shared by A and B. D and G. But it's not going to go in the middle portion um, with the letter C because the set C does not contain those letters. Alright, so we got area 2. <clears throat> Excuse me, what was next? Area 4. So we're going to figure that guy out. What's area 4? If I look up in the diagram there, um, it's this, the area shared by sets A and C. Let me look at the set A and C and see if they have anything in common. Of course besides the letter C, because that's already in there. Let's see, A... Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. I've already written down C, D, G. Who's left? C, D, G. So you got E, H, and I. Are any of those also in set C? E, H, and I? Well, I, yeah, I is in there. So it looks like A and C, the sets A and C, have I in common. So I'll put that guy there. Okay. And the next thing that we want to fill in after set, or sorry, area 4, where'd it go? Is area 1. Which if you look back at the, oh wait. No, no, sorry, area 6. So area 6, what was that? That's the area shared by C and B. I'm going to look at sets B and C. Do they have anything in common besides the letter C? See, the, the set B has A, no. C, we've already done that. D and G, nope. Alright, so it looks like the area 6, which is, where are we? This area here is going to be empty. Not that you have to write that, you just know that there's going to be nothing there. Because that would be the area reserved for anything that B and C have in common, but A does not have. There's nothing like that, so we're just going to leave it empty. And now we're going to kind of go to the outer portions. Let's fill in what A has that no one else has, what B has that no one else has, and then what C has that no one else has. So where's set A? It kind of helped actually that I was crossing things off as I went. 
when I went over set A, well, let me see. We crossed off a bunch of things, but we had E and H left over, I guess. Those were the things we haven't filled in yet. So those must go in this area that's part of A, but not part of either other set. Okay. And then we can fill in, let's see, this portion here that's um, part of set B, but not part of A and C. So let me see, set B. Are there any elements in set B that I haven't written out in my diagram yet? What does B have? B has A, C, D, G. Are any of those missing? I don't see A here, huh? So I'll put that here. A, C, D, G. Other than that, I think we filled everything else from set B in. So we're done with that. And now C. Does set C have anything contained within it that we haven't written in the diagram yet? What does C have? C, F, I, J. Anything I haven't written from that? I have C, no F. Okay, so that's going there. I is already in there, but J is not. Alright, so it kind of makes sense, like, as you can see, that you're filling things in from middle to outer. Okay, and the very last region that's actually the easiest one to forget about is what's in the universal set out here that's not in any of the circles. So now all I have to do is look in the universal set and say, what have I not written yet? A, I've already written, right? Yeah, that's there. Is B already in the diagram? No, B is not in the diagram. I'm going to place that out here. I didn't put B, did I? No. Okay, B's not there. How about C? Yeah, C is right in the middle. D, where is D? Yeah, D's there. E is there. F is there. G is also there. H, yes. I, yes. J. That's it. So it looks like B is the only guy that's outside all three sets. And I can check by looking back. If you look at set A, B, and C, I don't see the element B in any of them, do I? No. Okay, but I think that's the only one that's in the universal set that's not in any of the other sets. All right, so that's yeah. These are these could be complicated if you don't follow this procedure where you start in the middle and work your way out. But yeah, as long as you work work your way from the middle out, then you're doing good. How about example two? This is a little different because they already have a Venn diagram for us that's filled in, whereas in the last one we were supposed to fill in a Venn diagram. What do they want us to do here? <coughs> Excuse me. Use the Venn diagram to list the sets in roster form. Remember from back way back when roster form is just where you take the squiggly brackets that represent a set and just write out explicitly um, all the elements in that set. So first we have set A. It says these are all the people with blonde hair. Where's set A? They haven't labeled it in the Venn diagram, but I see that they've labeled it blonde hair. So this must be set A. Let's see, I noticed they said um, all the people with blonde hair, but they didn't say, well, it can't be in another set. So I am going to include these three names here, Sue, Sam, and Bill. Anything that's in the circle um, A even if it's part of another circle. So I'm going to have Julie, Sally, Sue, Sam, and Bill. And it doesn't have to be in that order. So I just got to write those out. I already forgot what they were. Okay, I remember Bill. Remember, which, who else was it? Sue, Sam, Sally, Julie. That's a lot of S names. Sue, Sam, Sally, Julie. You notice in math problems, a lot of times the, the names of people that they have, they're pe people that, I don't know, like in your grandparents' generation, do you know anyone named Sue or Sally? Not really, right? I mean, Julie maybe, but probably not. I don't know, I think it's kind of funny. It's always like Gladys or something. <laughs> something that only my grandma might be named or her friends. Anyway, I'm not sure why they do it. It's kind of funny. I guess the books are so old or something. Maybe that's why. But all right, the universal set. Oh man, that's everything. So every every name that's in this whole rectangle here, I got to write out. Why did I do that? How am I going to write that out? I'm going to try to write really small, really tall here got Julie, and it, again, it doesn't matter what order you put these in, as long as you list all the names somehow. Julie, Sally, Sue, I mean, definitely everything that was in A is in there. Sam, Bill. Alright, now who else am I missing? Christine, Mary, those are in set B, but I haven't written those yet. Christine, Mary, and who else? Uh, I guess I'm missing Ian, Peter, Paul, and Becky. I think that's all the names. Ian, Peter, Paul, and Becky. Ian. Ah, I'm running out of room here. Peter. It's okay to go to the next line. Paul and Becky. I think that's everybody's name. I think so. Alright, now the next set C. Alright, what was that guy? Set C was okay. They said it's all this all the boys, which looks like is this circle here. So I'm gonna name all the guys or yeah, I guess guys, yeah. I was going to say all the people, but yeah, they said boy. So all the people that are in this circle here. So Bill, Sam, Ian, Peter, Paul. And not, not necessarily in that order. It could be in any order. Ah, 
This is kind of tedious writing out the stupid set. Sam, Bill, me and Paul, Peter. In any order. Sam, Sam, Bill. <laughs> Why'd I always forget that name? Ian, Paul, and one more Peter, my friend Peter. I guess Peter, people are named Peter, right? Paul, that's pretty common, is it? I don't know. I'm not even sure. Okay. And then set B, the last, well, the last lettered set, I guess. B is the people that are older than A. Alright, where's that? <clears throat> that's the people in the circle, the one circle we haven't talked about yet. Where are we? Get a different color here. Here we go, older than eight, so we want all these people here. Sue, Sam, Ian, Mary, Christine. In any order, it doesn't matter. So we want Sue, Sam, Ian, Mary, Christine. Ian, Mary, yeah, Mary, I don't know anyone named Mary, as a matter of fact. It's a good name, but for some reason, I don't know anyone named Mary. Oh well. All right, now they're getting kind of interesting here. They're gonna add some of those symbols that we learned in the last section. Remember B with this little, um, what is that, apostrophe, I guess? That's B complement. That's all people. I would say elements, but I guess these are people. Not in B. Alright, so where was set B? We had Sue, Sam, Ian, Mary, Christine. I just have to look, pretty much look at this um, diagram and say, I'm going to list all the names that are outside this green circle. Because everything in this green circle that I drew is in B. Everything outside that green circle is not in B. So I want Julie, Sally, Bill, Paul, Peter, Becky. Am I going to remember that? Julie, Sally, I think I forgot someone, Paul, Peter, Becky? Did I get everyone? So Julie, Sally, Paul, Peter, Becky, oh, Bill. Did I skip Bill? Why do I always forget Bill? I feel bad now. <coughs> Poor Bill. Nothing against Bill. <coughs> Excuse me, Bill. Okay. I think we got that one. Yeah, I think the rest of these are just kind of testing you. Do you remember what all these uh, symbols mean? Here we got A intersect B. Remember, you don't have to write this part out like when I write words, but it's just a reminder. This is what A and B have in common. And in common. You know, you can just kind of think that in your head, and then you can write out the set. All right, what do A and B have in common? Where's that? Do -do -do -do. I'll try to highlight it. I'm going to run out of colors here, huh? <laughs> um, where are we? What do A and B have in common? That's this little, I don't know, what shape is that? Like a football, I guess. This football here is where A and B intersect. And you do include the, the Sam, because even though it's part of C, it's still part of A and B. That's all that they, re they require. Okay, so Sue and Sam, that's what I want. <clears throat> okay, I better write that down before I forget their names again. Sue and Sam. All the S names, huh? Okay, so far so good. I think the next set is kind of complicated looking, huh? It's got A intersect B union C. Ooh. I gotta think about that. So, and notice that there's um, parentheses around B union C, so you're supposed to kind of consider that part first. B union C is, remember union means you put all the elements together. All elements in B and C put together. So where's that? That's pretty much, yeah, anything that's in this circle for C, and anything that's in that circle for B. All, put all those names together. The only people that aren't part of that are Becky out here, Julie way the heck over here, and Sally. But everybody, every other name is in B, Union, C. But we want that intersect. Remember, that means what we have in common <coughs> with A. But what do those two circles have in common with A when I put them together? <coughs> Alright, so those two circles put together had everybody's name except Julie and Sally. But I want to see where do those overlap with A. I think the answer is this area here. Because remember, B union C contained everything but Julie, Sally, and Becky. But what did that have in common with set A? Well, the only part where that overlaps is Sue, because that's part of A and B. Sam is part of all three. And Bill is part of just A and C. So it looks like Sue, Sam, and Bill. I think those are the winners. Alright, let's see. Sue, Sam, and Bill. And it, again, it doesn't have to be in that order. As long as those three are there. And no others. Alright. So a lot of times it just takes some brainstorming. Like how I wrote this out. This kind of helped me. Let me think about what's in parentheses first. Identify what that is. And then I'll try to identify what that intersect A was. It's kind of hard. Yeah, a lot of, lot to think about. Um, let's try this next one here. A complement minus B. 
Remember, a complement, that means all elements that are not in A, or I guess I could say people, because these are people. People not in A, okay, okay. Minus, so I'm taking away all the people that are in B. All right, let's, it kind of helps, oh my gosh. You know what I should do is erase everything I've drawn so far. I mean, you, you don't have to do that. <coughs> but I feel like this is getting, oops, what the heck? This is getting kind of complicated here. Ah. It's hard to see what the heck is going on. So, I mean, of course you can use highlighters or pencils or whatever type to kind of help you identify parts of this thing. But once it gets kind of messy, it's kind of nice to be able to erase and consider a new thing. Whatever you're trying to consider now. Alright, it's not going to be perfect here. That's okay. Alright, let's see. What are we doing again? A complement. What is that? A complement? Everything outside A. Alright, well that just means you're taking away these two names. That's it. So everything that's outside A is all the names except Julie and Sally. So you're taking all those names besides Julie and Sally and taking away anything in B. So where's B? This is this set. I'm taking all these guys away. So I've, I've, I guess I've eliminated Julie and Sally because they're not part of A complement. And then I've eliminated all these names that are in B because it says take away everybody there. So now all I have to do is, <coughs> excuse me, list everyone that's left over. Oh wait, take company. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Let's, let me erase the highlighting. I'm sorry. I think I oversimplified something. Because A complement, I think I didn't quite get it right. A complement, that's all the people that are not in A. So really, notice Julie and Sally are in A, but also Sue, Sam, and Bill are in A. So it's all the names besides these, these guys. I'm sorry. I should have highlighted Sue, Sam, and Bill as well. Those are all in A complement. <clears throat> then if I take away people in B, that's taking away Christine, Mary, and Ian. But Sue and Sam were already taken away. <clears throat> because they're part of A, which means they're not part of A complement. I'm sorry about that. So who's left over? Paul, Peter, and Becky are the only names left. Paul, Peter, Becky. There we go. Got it. Well, this last one, this last one looks kind of complicated. What do we got here? It's A minus B in parentheses, so we're supposed to consider that first. And then the complement last. Maybe I'll do it in stages. With A minus B. Um, and you can even list it out if you want, if that helps, instead of highlighting stuff. Remember, A minus B means what's in A, but not in B. You're taking away anything that was in B. So all the things that are in set A are in this circle here, because we called that set A. But if I take away everything that's in set B, I take away Sue, because she's in that circle, and Sam is in that circle. I don't take away Bill because he's not part of Circle B. He's part of Circle C. So it looks like Julie, Sally, and Bill are the only ones left over from Set A if I take away everyone in Set B. So I can write that out. Julie, Sally, Bill. Not, this is not the answer because I haven't considered the complement yet. Or it's going to help us. Julie, Sally, Bill. So let's see. If I want to find the complement of that, let's see. That would be... Remember, complement means everyone that's not in that set. So I just have to list everyone that's not in here. Everyone not in this set. <clears throat> that's going to be a lot of people, right? So, pretty much name everyone except Julie, Sally, and Bill. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Sue, Sam, in any order. Sue, Sam, Christine, Mary. And what other people are left there? Uh, Ian, Paul, Peter, Becky. Oh, geez. Ian. Sorry about running out of room. Paul, Peter, Becky. There we go. That does help. If there's a lot going on and something they're asking for like this, there's A minus B, first of all. That's something to think about. But then they throw a complement in there as well. You can find one thing first, and of course parentheses mean focus on that thing, and then find the second uh, complication, I guess. So the answer is this set that we come up with, not the original one. This one is just kind of getting us towards the answer, not really part of the answer. Um, let's see, so how about example three? <clears throat> Use a Venn diagram to determine whether the following sets are equal. <clears throat> so all I have to do there is draw a Venn diagram of each thing they mention. So here, the first thing is A intersect B union C. Okay, let me try to draw that. Well, they're talking about three sets, huh? So I'm going to go draw the universal rectangle or square, whatever you want to call it. And then we got set A. You can use all different colors, but I don't know. It seems like overkill. Set B and set C. As long as they all intersect somehow. And we're going to shade what part they're talking about. So let's see. B union C. Where's that? That would be... Think about that. It's everything in B and C put together. 
put, oh wait, let's see, that's just B union C. B union C means put B and C together. Okay, so that would be, let me see, I'm going to color it in, but I'm going to remember that this is not the final answer. Everything in C and everything in B put together, all this crap right here, I mean stuff, sorry. <laughs> but then we're going to intersect that with A. So what does that area that we shaded have in common with A? That's what we want. Well, where that overlaps A is, this is where my final answer is going to be. This little, I don't know, what do you call this shape? Like a boomerang? This boomerang shape is our answer. Whatever the heck you call that guy. That does not look like a boomerang. Pretend. There we go. Okay, so we did that one. Now we're going to try the one next to it. If the shaded portion is exactly the same, then these are equal sets. But if the shaded portion is not the same, they're not equal sets. Let's try drawing the next one. Um, I probably should have left more room, but oh well. You know, what are you going to do? Here's the universal set. And then maybe I'll use a different color. I'm going to draw set A. Oh, I went outside the line. Oh well, set B and set C. Now first of all, in, in parentheses they have A intersect B. Maybe I'll shade that in real quick. Where's A intersect B? That would be what A and C, or sorry, A and B have in common. That's this kind of football area. Alright, but that's not my final answer. What do I want to know? Is that Union C? Union C. Oh, you can't even read that because it's so yellow. How does that... Oh. How does that work with C? Oh. Well, remember Union means put together. So I'm going to take that football and put it together with everything in C. So I'll shade that football and also what was in C. All that stuff, but also all this crap. Alright, I'm pretty sure those are not the same Venn diagram, right? Those totally different shadings. They're not equal sets. And that's the answer. And if you want to remind yourself why, because you might want to look back on this, it's because the shadings are not exactly the same. Um, same. They have some stuff in common, but they have to be exactly the same in order to be equal. Alright, let's try this next one. Same kind of thing. I think now we kind of got the hang of it, but these are more complicated uh, statements here. Let's try this guy. Ooh, that's a complicated one. Huh? I have to build up to it like we've done before. Here's the universal set. Um, then we got A and B and C. Alright, it kind of helps you yeah, to build up. So how about, I'll use yellow for the beginning thing. The thing, first thing I want to do is think about what's in parentheses. Because it's like order of operations. B intersects C, that's what they have in common. So it's this little football here. And then we, let me add one more complication. After I think about the intersection, the next thing I see looking outward from there is a, a what is it? Complement. Remember, complement means everything outside of that. So now I'm going to highlight basically anything that's not part of the football I shaded. So it's everything outside. All this crud. I'm get, making this really messy, sorry. Everything but the yellow. All right, and then I'm going to add the next complication where I union that with A. Okay, so remember, something union something is you just add that in. So, I'm going to be shading B intersect C complement, which is already something I've highlighted. Or sorry, something I've uh, shaded. So everything I've shaded put together with something else. Let's see, shade and all that stuff in. B intersect C complement is part of my answer. I just have to union it, which means add more. Union it with A. Okay, there's, so there's B intersect C complement. If I put everything in A together with that, all that adds is this little, I guess the top portion of that um, football shape. So it's like the whole diagram shaded except that one little section that's yellow right there. So my answer is everything but the yellow. And these sets would be equal if the next diagram is exactly the same as that, where the only thing not shaded is that little yellow portion. <coughs> so let's try that um, for this guy. The universal set is whatever. Let's start with the inner part. Oh, sorry, I gotta draw A, B, C now. Hello. A, B, C. Okay, we're good. So first of all, B complement union C. That's even a thinker right there. B complement is what's not in B. Put together with C. Alright, so everything not in B. I guess I can highlight that first. Um, I guess I'll use yellow. Everything not in B. Where's that? It's all this stuff out here. Not in the circle B. Having a good time. You guys like coloring? Remember back in the day when you were a little kid? Coloring was awesome. It kind of brings you back to childhood, I guess. If you have any little little brothers or sisters or kids yourself, you, kind of, you could steal their crayons or whatever and have a good time with it. Just don't tell them because they'll get angry. 
Yeah, and then you can be real OCD about it, like me, and say, ooh, I missed a spot. Let me get real serious right now. All right, that's beautiful. That's B complement, and then I'm unioning C. So whatever I've highlighted with yellow, I'm also going to add everything that was in C. But it looks like I'm missing this football. That's part of C. I'm putting that together with what I already had. All right. So that's this portion here, what's in parentheses. Now I want to intersect that, which means what does that that I've shaded have in common with a complement? Let's see. Ooh, that's kind of complicated, huh? Hmm. You know what you could do is highlight um, what a complement. What's an what's an a complement, and then just look for what they have in common. So remember, a complement. That's when you put um, when you put ah sorry everything outside of a. What's outside of a? Everything here. Doo -doo 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 all this crap put together. And yeah, you know what, if you use highlighters or, I guess, some type of thing that you can see through, sort of, you can probably see where the overlap is. Let's see, let me do the new man. Yeah, I can't get too OCD, huh? This is gonna take too much time. You guys are gonna get bored. There we go. Well, that's a compliment. The yellow was, the woods in parentheses. And the intersection means I wanna know what these have in common. <clears throat> so it looks like putting the yellow and the pink or whatever color together Left me with red, I think. So everything in red is the answer here. So this is the red is the answer. That's where they overlap. Notice the purple, that's only where there was purple, not yellow. And the yellow is where there was yellow, not purple. Or pink, whatever the hell. In this diagram, everything, what do we say? Everything in blue? Oh no, everything... Everything but the yellow is the answer, I think we said. And then you, all you want to know is, are these shadings actually equal? No. No, because the second... The very Venn diagram on the right side here is missing everything in A. Yeah, but the Venn diagram on the left has almost every actually has everything in A. So they're a lot different. The answer is no, not equal. The shadings are not the same. It's still kind of complicated, and it does help to go step by step like we did. Shade this, shade that, kind of get your, get the hang of it. Ugh, complicated. All right. I think we're doing good though. Hopefully everything's going good for you. Uh, this last one is a lot of wor words, so hopefully it's going to go okay and we don't get too bored. Um, this one might be a little delicate, so I have to take, take my time and be careful here. Let's read it. JNC Mechanical Contractors wants to classify its project. The contractors categorize set A as... Okay, I might have to write this down before I forget. Set A is construction projects. Okay. And if you're kind of OCD like me, you can color code too. A is construction projects, and they said set B is plumbing projects. Okay, what else? And then set C. Hopefully, I'm sorry if anybody's colorblind and you can't tell the difference between some of these. Huh? Sorry about that. Set C is projects with a budget greater than 300000 Okay. Projects with a budget greater than $300,000. Alright, just to remind myself which, what means what. Okay. Da -da -da -da. And then what do they say? Uh, part A, determine, or sorry, draw a Venn diagram that can be used to categorize the company construction projects according to listed criteria. Alright, so I think all they mean is kind of set up your Venn diagram. You don't have to shade anything yet or write anything down in there. You're just going to draw the universal set, which I guess in this one would mean projects in general, because A is a certain type of project, um, B is a certain type of project, and then C is a certain type. But imagine the uh, universal set is projects in general. And yeah, might as well keep the color code going, going huh? Here's set A. Um, what else? Set B. What color was that? Red. Okay, good time. And then set C was green. Good time. Okay, okay. Very good time. Alright. Mm. So I think that's all they want for A. And then from there, we're just kind of setting up what we're going to do in part B, C, D. Or is there a D? Yeah, there is a D. Um, part B says, determine the region of the diagram that contains construction projects and plumbing projects with a budget greater than 300000 Okay, got to think about that. Well, um, let's see, maybe, yeah, yeah, so greater than 300000 means you're in circle C, so I know that my answer is going to be in that green circle, or at least part of it, but if it's a construction project, it's part of A, I guess I'd want this, and they said also I'd like to all the plumbing projects that are part of C, or have a budget, so it'd be this kind of boomerang shape. Because those, those are the parts that are in A and B, because those are the plumbing and construction projects. But you want what they have in common in the C, because you want their budget to be 
greater than, oh, did it say greater than or less than? Yeah, greater than 300,000. Alright, so that, I don't know if it helped, but I'm gonna say, I did part A, which was just setting it up. Part B is, I don't know, I guess I could say it's the highlighted yellow part. So I might be highlighting other stuff in the coming parts, part C. Oops. Part C now, alright, we're good. How about part C? They say, Oh, sorry, we didn't finish part B. I'm sorry about that. Then they said, describe the regions, region using set A, B, and C with set operations. They use union, intersection, and the complement as necessary. Okay, so they pretty much want us to describe the, the um, set that we highlighted. I don't know, what would you say that is? I'd say that's A, union, B, because they said plumbing projects and um, construction projects. But they said, but they have to have a budget of 300000 so it's intersect, because they have to have that 300000 budget, C. Yeah, because it kind of, the union is A and B, because it sounded like it could be a plumbing project or a construction project. That's why it's a union. But it has to have a budget of, <coughs> excuse me, greater than 300000 so it's like, and it's in C. It has to be in C. That's what I'd say. And I put parentheses around A and B, because... They talk about that first, plumbing and construction project, and then they have to have this much budget. So I think that would be your answer. A union B intersect C with, and you do need the parentheses to remind yourself that that comes first. All right, part C wants you to determine the region of the diagram that contains plumbing projects with a budget greater than 300,000. And that's it, okay. So plumbing, which one was that? That was the set B. I think you'll use a different color, this would be pink or purple, whatever the hell. So what's in set B? But they wanted to also have a budget, what do they say? Um, greater than 300,000. So what's in B but also in C? That's everything in this football here. I guess I could shade it in, but I guess I don't want to lose the yellow for part B. But really it's everything in that football region right there. Let me make sure that makes sense. Determine the region of the diagram that contains plumbing projects. That, yeah, that's set B with a budget greater than 300000 Oh, that are not construction projects. Uh oh, sorry. Sorry, oops, I didn't even come consider that part. Let me erase that, the purple. Dang it, that kind of ruins everything. Oh, well, whatever. Well. So they're part of that football, but then they said they're not construction projects. So it would be that football, but I kind of want to disclude anything that was part of set A, because those are construction projects. So the, it was the football, but now I'm going to disclude um, the very inner... Uh, area. So it would be the football but minus the inner part, this guy right here. That's what I want. So that little kind of triangle type shape that I took away, that's all the stuff that was in part, that is in set A, because I said we don't want it to be construction projects. Okay. So describe the region using sets A, B, and C with set operations. Okay, so how did they phrase it first? They said, um, the region of the diagram that contains plumbing projects, so it sounds like what? Set B. Um, with a budget of 300000 So it's like, it has to be a plumbing project and it has to have a budget of 300000 So it'd be an uh, intersect. Yeah, you try to throw the word or and and in there and see which one makes more sense. So if I were to use the word or, it's a plumbing project or it has a budget of 300000 But that's not how they phrase it. It sounds like it has to be a plumbing project and it has to have a budget of more than 300000 So it'd be intersect. But then they also say that it's not a construction project. So it's like, and it's not part of A, which means it's part of A complement. There we go. Yeah, sometimes it helps to rephrase. So it's saying, like, um, it's a plumbing and the budget is greater than 300000 So that was, <coughs> excuse me, kind of the B intersect C. And so there's another intersection. It's not in A, or construction. So that's kind of how you can think of it. Think of it in words and then try to come up with the symbols for it. Plumbing and budget greater than 300,000. That means B intersect C. And it's not part of A, which means it's part of A complement. <coughs> I think that works. All right. Now, one more part, I think, in this, this problem. Part D wants us to determine the region of the diagram that contains construction projects and non-plumbing projects. Oh, okay, that's kind of confusing because the word and makes you think intersection. But when someone says something like that, like, let me take all the construction projects and the plumbing projects all together. That's actually the union. You're just putting them together. 
construction projects and the plumbing, or sorry, non-plumbing means not in the company. Ah, oh, that's tricky. I didn't see the non with there real quick. Yeah, if they said plumbing, I'd use B. But non-plumbing means not in B, so complement. Um, yeah, so I'm taking all the construction projects, which, which is A, and I'm throwing it in with all the non-plumbing projects, which is B complement. That's the first thing they mention, and then I imagine there's more, but then whose budget is less than or equal to 300000 So notice, since set C is all the but the ones where budget is greater than 300000 the opposite of that would be C complement. Well, what's the opposite of having a budget greater than 300000 it's a budget less than or equal to 300000 So I think they're talking about C complement there. I just got to figure out, <coughs> excuse me, is it going to be intersection or union there? Um, what do they say? All the construction projects and non-plumbing projects. So is it like, they can be construction and non-plumbing, or they can be have a budget of less than or equal to blah, or does it have to have a budget of less than or equal to blah, and... I think it's an and. It has to have a budget. It's not like, let me take everything on the left and everything on the right, put them together. No, it's everything on the left, but it has to have a budget less than blah, blah, blah. So I think that would be the guy. Um, and let me see, I can uh, highlight that. Um, what color have we not used yet? It's hard, to, sorry, we're getting kind of complicated here. So where are we? Um, all the construction projects, so that's how they start. That's something in set A, put together with everything that's not in B. All right, so I think we're just, Okay, I think I can picture that. Um, and then they, they want it to be intersecting C complement. So it has to be outside C. Um, it has to be... Well, that's actually a complicated one. Maybe I'm gonna... Just to be safe, I'm gonna draw another Venn diagram and kind of go slow here. We've got A, B, and C. Yeah, that one's complicated, so if you want, you can go in stages. First, what's in the uh, parentheses there? A union B complement, where's that? A put together with B complement. So it's everything outside of B. All this stuff. Everything outside of B. But the union says put it together with everything in A. So I think I want to also shade in this area here that's in between A and B because that's you're throwing in everything in A, even if it's part of B. So that's that. And then I want to intersect that with C complement. So where does that red intersect? <clears throat> Remember, C complement is everything outside of C. Where is C? I'm going to first shade everything outside of C, and then I'll just kind of visually see what do those have in common there. The red shading and the yellow shading. And that's my answer there. So I think everything outside of B... I'm oh, sorry, everything outside of C... That's pretty much it, huh? Everything outside of C? Oh, no, no, no. What the hell? So I have to... Sh I have to somehow on my original diagram... Maybe in green I'll do that. Green. Um, shade in everything where there's, <coughs> excuse me, both yellow and red put together. So I'll see. I see yellow and red all in here, I think, in the A area that's outside of C. Um, then actually part of this area where it's A and B put together. B on, in my, my diagram below, it only has yellow, not red, so I'm not including that. Everything outside of it has red shading and yellow shading though. And everything in C only has red shading, so I'm not including that. But everything outside of C has both. It looks like this. It pretty much looks like everything outside of B and outside of C, except you're also including, let's see, this little portion here. I hope you can see that I put a little arrow to it. Phew, that's complicated. Whew. I think that's probably more complicated than you'll see most problems. It's just like, if you can do that problem, you can do anything. That's kind of how it goes. <laughs> But anyway, I hope everything made sense. If you have to kind of view, especially that example, more than once, don't feel bad. Or if you're doing your homework and you kind of have to follow it along, um, follow along homework with this problem, don't feel bad. It's fine. It's really complicated. This one's too complicated for an exam, that's for sure. But thanks for listening. This video kind of went long, huh? But I hope it made it, made it make more sense. But kind of over... And I'm sorry, if you're good at these, you probably thought, man, that was... You, you explained that way too much. You could have uh, said a lot less words. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just hope that if there's someone that kind of struggles with this, it helps to explain it a lot. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Hello, everyone. In the last section, we talked about just kind of an intro to Venn diagrams. And for the most part, we talked about um, Venn diagrams with two sets. But this time, we're going to introduce three sets. I think actually we talked a little bit about three sets in one example in the last section. 
I just kind of wanted to throw it in there so it's not super, I don't know, uh, surprising in this section, I guess. But yeah, we'll talk about Venn diagrams with three sets. It makes it a lot more complicated, but as long as you, I don't know, you kind of follow the procedure and uh, definitely watch all the examples on this video. Um, you can always come back and try to model any homework problems you're doing kind of uh, with, in these types of ways that we're going to go over in this section. So a good thing, one good thing is that there's not a lot of new theory, there's no new definitions or anything like that. It's all the same definitions and symbols as the, as the last section, but now we're kind of um, throwing in a third set, which complicates things a lot. So the section is called Venn Diagrams with Three Sets, and then Verification of Equality of Sets. That's kind of, I guess, a new topic. And that is, kind of plays a smaller role in this section. We'll talk about that in a little while. But first of all, they want to they want to kind of outline how do you go about constructing a Venn diagram with three sets? Let's call them A, B, and C. And notice in this, this uh, Venn diagram over here, the really general one, it's called set A this circle, set B this circle here, and set C this circle. And they've uh, labeled all the sections of it. So notice Roman numeral 1 is this area in A, but not in B or C. Roman numeral 2 is in B and A, but not in C. Roman numeral 3 is part of B, but not part of A or C. And then where's 4? In this area here, it looks like it's part of A and C, but not part of B. And then 5 is right in the very middle of the entire diagram. That's, that's probably what you're looking for whenever you do these problems first. That's the part that's the intersection of all three, A, B, and C. And if you know the, the thing that goes in there, that's going to be kind of the key to unlocking this problem. That's where you'd want to start, is in the middle, and kind of work your way out. And then uh, the sixth area of this diagram is here. That's the area shaded by, or sorry, the area shared by B and C, but not A. Area 7 is this area down here, part of C, but not part of A or B. And then the last area is area 8, which is in the universal set, but it's not part of A, B, or C. So, okay, let's, let's just read these, um, these steps together. Let's see, step 1 says, determine the elements in region V, which is 5. Like I saw, that's what I was saying earlier, is that... That portion right in the middle is the most important part. If you know what goes in there, that kind of is the key to unlocking these problems. So we're going to put whatever we know in there. Hopefully we know it. And then we're going to, from there, kind of work our way out. So that's step one. Step two, let's try to determine the elements to be placed in region two, which is the intersection of A and B, but not part of C. Um, so again, you're kind of trying to work your way out from the middle outward. Uh, the elements in this set belong to regions two and five. Wait, where are we? Two and five. Place the elements in the set A intersect B that are not listed in five. Yeah, and a lot. Of, I think a lot of these directions, I kind of maybe don't make a lot of sense right now because we don't have an example in front of us. But maybe as we do examples, it'll make more sense. Um, that's pretty much the idea. Is start in the middle, um, area five. Figure that out and work your way out. So right outside of area five, notice our. Let's see. I'm gonna try to find a different color here. Areas two and four and six. So those would be nice to know after you've filled in area 5. And then once you know those, then you're going to work your way out to these larger areas, 1, 3, and 7. And then probably the last thing that you'll know, well, usually the last thing is area 8, the outer region that's not part of A, B, or C. Um, so let's see, what's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what step 2 says. Step 3 says, yeah, step 2 says kind of find, find what's in regions 2, 4, and 6, like we said, after you find what's in region 5. And then step three kind of says, all right, now you're working your way out to the larger parts of the circles. Area one, three, and seven is what you want to find next, if possible. Um, and then area eight comes last. So pretty much all it's saying is you want to go for those regions, figure out what they are in, in the order of five, and then two slash... It doesn't really matter what order these guys are in, two, four, six, as long as they're there somewhere. So first five, and then those three. And then you want to find the outer regions, the one, the three... And the, what was it, 7? Okay, and lastly you'll find what's in region 8. That's usually the idea. Yeah, start in the middle and work your way out. Um, and then let's see. So we'll do a few examples where we try to draw a Venn diagram of three sets as described there. But then later on we're going to try to, as the title of this section talks about, determine whether two sets are equal. So later on we'll be doing this. We'll list the elements in each set, if possible, and compare. So that's pretty much it. If they say, hey, are these sets the same? I'm going to try to list all the elements in each set and see if they are. Um, if this is not possible, 
Then we'll draw the Venn diagrams of each set and compare the diagrams. So you kind of have two uh, methods. I guess if you can explicitly write out the elements in that set, then, that's, then you just write them out and compare. But for some reason, if it's not possible to write out the elements, we'll draw Venn diagrams and then we'll see. We'll compare the Venn diagrams. All right, but that's for a later example. So first, let's kind of focus on what was in that box up there, how to fill in a Venn diagram with three sets. So let's see, example one says, construct a Venn diagram illustrating the following sets. you got the universal set. It's got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, L, I. Oh, sorry, that's the capital I. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> capital I, J. And the set A has C, D, E, G, H, I. The set B has A, C, D, G. And the set C has C, F. That's supposed to be an I again. I, J. Um, and I think we actually saw an example sort of like this in the previous section. So let's see. First, I'm, I'm going to draw... Sorry, I, didn't, I know I didn't leave a lot of room. Sorry about that. Um... I'm going to draw the box for universal set, one circle for set A, one circle for set B, and a circle for set C. And you kind of try to make them large so that you can fit everything in there. And then it, it probably helps, I mean, if you have a lot of different colored pens or markers or crayons or whatever you, whatever you have, it would be kind of nice to label <clears throat> A, B, and C as different colors. But if not, it's okay. I'm going to use different a different color, though, to put the um, elements in there. So I think, first of all, the universal set... That's not going to really help us. That's kind of the last thing you want to do, like we said, is that'll tell us what's in the last, the outer region, region 8. I think what we want to do, again, is we want to fill in, what would we say, region 5 first. Region 5 is what all three have in common. So let me look at um, set A, B, and C. And Do they have anything in common that's in all three of them? Well, I noticed the letter C is in all three of them. So that's one thing. Sorry, let me zoom in here. It's kind of hard to see. Um... Uh, what else is in the, all three of them? Is D in all three of them? No, it's not in C. What else? What else? Is E in all of three of them? No. What else is in set A? G, H, I. Are any of those in all three sets? No. I think C is the only element that's in all three sets. Alright, so we got that. And what would we say next above in the steps? Then we want to fill in region 2. We got that done. Region 2 now. What was that again? That was the area that B, A and B um, have in common. So I'm going to look at sets A and B and see what they have in common. But keeping in mind that I've already filled in the letter C, so I'm not going to look for that. Do A and B have anything in common besides that guy? What does A have? D, E, G, H, I. D and G are also in B, so those are going to go in that area shared by A and B. D and G. But it's not going to go in the middle portion um, with the letter C because the set C does not contain those letters. All right, so we got area two. <clears throat> Excuse me, what was next? Area four. So we're going to figure that guy out. What's area four? If I look up in the diagram there, um, it's this, the area shared by sets A and C. Let me look at the set A and C and see if they have anything in common. Of course, besides the letter C, because that's already in there. Let's see, A. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. I've already written down C, D, G. Who's left? C, D, G. Oh. So you got E, H, and I. Are any of those also in set C? E, H, and I? Well, I, yeah, I is in there. So it looks like A and C, the sets A and C, have I in common. So I'll put that guy there. Okay. And the next thing that we want to fill in after set, or sorry, area four, where'd it go? Is area one. Which if you look back at the, oh wait. No, no, sorry, area six. So area six, what was that? That's the area shared by C and B. I'm going to look at sets B and C. Do they have anything in common besides the letter C? See, the, the set B has A, no. C, we've already done that. D and G, nope. Alright, so it looks like the area 6, which is, where are we? This area here is going to be empty. Not that you have to write that, you just know that there's going to be nothing there. Because that would be the area reserved for anything that B and C have in common, but A does not have. There's nothing like that, so we're just going to leave it empty. And now we're going to kind of go to the outer portions. Let's fill in what A has that no one else has, what B has that no one else has, and then what C has that no one else has. So where's set A? It kind of helped, actually, that I was crossing things off as I went. When I went over set A, well, let me see. We crossed off a bunch of things, but we had E and H left over, I guess. Those were the things we haven't filled in yet. So those must go in this area that's part of A, but not part of either other set. Okay. 
and then we can fill in, let's see, this portion here that's um, part of set B, but not part of A and C. So let me see, set B. Are there any elements in set B that I haven't written out in my diagram yet? What does B have? B has A, C, D, G. Are any of those missing? I don't see A here, huh? So I'll put that here. A, C, D, G. Other than that, I think we filled everything else from set B in. So we're done with that. And now C. Does set C have anything contained within it that we haven't written in the diagram yet? What does C have? C, F, I, J. Anything I haven't written from that? I have C, no F. Okay, so that's one there. I is already in there, but J is not. All right, so it kind of makes sense, like, as you can see, that you're filling things in from middle to outer. Okay, and the very last region that's actually the easiest one to forget about is what's in the universal set out here that's not in any of the circles. So now all I have to do is look in the universal set and say, what have I not written yet? A, I've already written, right? Yeah, that's there. Is B already in the diagram? No, B is not in the diagram. I'm going to place that out here. I didn't put B, did I? No. Okay, B not there. How about C? Yeah, C is right in the middle. D, where is D? Yeah, D's there. E is there. F is there. G is also there. H, yes. I, yes. J. That's it. So it looks like B is the only guy that's outside all three sets. And I can check by looking back. If you look at set A, B, and C, I don't see the element B in any of them, do I? No. Okay, but I think that's the only one that's in the universal set that's not in any of the other sets. Alright, so that's, yeah, these are, these could be complicated if you don't follow this procedure where you start in the middle and work your way out. But yeah, as long as you work, work your way from the middle out, then you're doing good. How about example two? This is a little different. Because they already have a Venn diagram for us that's filled in, whereas in the last one we were supposed to fill in a Venn diagram. What do they want us to do here? <coughs> Excuse me. Use the Venn diagram to list the sets in roster form. Remember from back, way back when, roster form is just where you take the squiggly brackets that represent a set and just write out explicitly um, all the elements in that set. So first we have set A. It says these are all the people with blonde hair. Where's set A? They haven't labeled it in the Venn diagram, but I see that they've labeled it blonde hair. So this must be set A. Let's see, I noticed they said um, all the people with blonde hair, but they didn't say, well, it can't be in another set. So I'm, I am going to include these three names here, Sue, Sam, and Bill. Anything that's in the circle um, A, even if it's part of another circle. So I'm going to have Julie, Sally, Sue, Sam, and Bill. And it doesn't have to be in that order. So i just got to write those out. I, I already forgot what they were. Okay, I remember Bill. Remember, which, who else was it? Sue, Sam, Sally, Julie. That's a lot of S names. Sue, Sam, Sally, Julie. You notice in math problems, a lot of times the, the names of people that they have, they're pe people that, I don't know, like in your grandparents' generation. Do you know anyone named Sue or Sally? Not really, right? I mean, Julie maybe, but probably not. I don't know, I think it's kind of funny. It's always like... Gladys, or something something that only my grandma might be named, or her friends. Anyway, I'm not sure why they do it. It's kind of funny. I guess the books are so old or something, maybe that's why. But alright, the universal set. Oh man, that's everything. So every every name that's in this whole rectangle here, I gotta write out. Why did I do that? How am I gonna write that out? I'm gonna try to write really small, really tall here. Got Julie, and it, again, it doesn't matter what order you put these in, as long as you list all the names somehow. Julie, Sally, Sue... I mean, definitely everything that was in A is in there. Sam, Bill. All right, now who else am I missing? Christine, Mary. Those are in set B, but I haven't written those yet. Christine, Mary, and who else? I uh, guess I'm missing Ian, Peter, Paul, and Becky. I think that's all the names. Ian, Peter, Paul, and Becky. Ian, ah, I'm running out of room here. Peter, it's okay to go to the next line. Paul. Becky, I think that's everybody's name. I think so. Alright, now the next set C. Alright, what was that guy? Set C was okay. They said it's all this all the boys, which looks like is this circle here. So I'm gonna name all the guys or yeah, I guess guys, yeah. I was gonna say all the people, but yeah, they said boy. So all the people that are in this circle here. So Bill, Sam, Ian, Peter, Paul. And not not necessarily in that order, it could be in any order. Ah, this is kind of tedious writing out this stupid set. Sam, Bill, Ian, Paul, Peter. In any order. Sam, Sam, Bill. Why do I always forget that name? Ian, Paul, 
one more Peter, my friend Peter. I guess Peter, people are named Peter, right? Paul, that's pretty common, is it? I don't know. I'm not even sure. Okay. And then set B, the last, well, the last lettered set, I guess. B is the people that are older than eight. All right, where's that? <clears throat> that's the people in the circle, the one circle we haven't talked about yet. Where are we? Get a different color here. Here we go, older than eight. So we want all these people here. Sue, Sam, Ian, Mary, Christine. In any order, it doesn't matter. So we want Sue, Sam, Ian, Mary, Christine. And Mary. Yeah, Mary, I don't know anyone named Mary, as a matter of fact. It's a good name, but for some reason, I don't know anyone named Mary. Oh well. Alright, now they're getting kind of interesting here. They're going to add some of those symbols that we learned in the last section. Remember B with this little, um, what is that, apostrophe, I guess? That's B complement. That's all people. I would say elements, but I guess these are people not in B. Alright, so where was set B? We had Sue, Sam, Ian, Mary, Christine. I just have to look, pretty much look at this um, diagram and say, I'm going to list all the names that are outside this green circle. Because everything in this green circle that I drew is in B. Everything outside that green circle is not in B. So I want Julie, Sally, Bill, Paul, Peter, Becky. Am I going to remember that? Julie, Sally, I think I forgot someone, Paul, Peter, Becky? Did I get everyone? So Julie, Sally, Paul, Peter, Becky, oh, Bill. Did I skip Bill? Why do I always forget Bill? I feel bad now. <coughs> Poor Bill. Nothing against Bill. <coughs> Excuse me, Bill. Okay. I think we got that one. Yeah, I think the rest of these are just kind of testing you. Do you remember what all these uh, symbols mean? Here we got A intersect B. Remember, you don't have to write this part out like when I write words, but it's just a reminder. This is what A and B have in common. In common. You know, you can just kind of think that in your head, and then you can write out the set. All right, what do A and B have in common? Where's that? Do -do -do -do. I'll try to highlight it. I'm going to run out of colors here, huh? <laughs> um, where are we? What do A and B have in common? That's this little, I don't know, what shape is that? Like a football, I guess. This football here is where A and B intersect. And you do include the, the Sam, because even though it's part of C, it's still part of A and B. That's all that they, re they require. Okay, so Sue and Sam, that's what I want. <clears throat> okay, I better write that down before I forget their names again. Sue and Sam. All the S names, huh? Okay, so far so good. I think the next set is kind of complicated looking, huh? It's got A intersect B union C. Ooh. I gotta think about that. So, and notice that there's um, parentheses around B union C, so you're supposed to kind of consider that part first. B union C is, remember union means you put all the elements together. All elements in B and C put together. So where's that? It's pretty much, yeah, anything that's in this circle for C, and anything that's in that circle for B. All, put all those names together. The only people that aren't part of that are Becky out here, Julie way the heck over here, and Sally. But everybody, every other name is in B, Union, C. But we want that intersect. Remember, that means what we have in common <coughs> with A. So what do those two circles have in common with A when I put them together? <coughs> all right, so those two circles put together had everybody's name except Julie and Sally. But I want to see where do those overlap with A. I think the answer is this area here. Because remember, B union C contained everything but Julie, Sally, and Becky. But what did that have in common with set A? Well, the only part where that overlaps is Sue, because that's part of A and B. Sam is part of all three. And Bill is part of just A and C. So it looks like Sue, Sam, and Bill. I think those are the winners. Alright, let's see. Sue, Sam, and Bill. And it, again, it doesn't have to be in that order. As long as those three are there. And no others. Alright. So a lot of times it just takes some brainstorming. Like how I wrote this out. This kind of helped me. Let me think about what's in parentheses first. Identify what that is. And then I'll try to identify what that intersect A was. It's kind of hard. Yeah, a lot of, lots to think about. Um, let's try this next one here. A complement minus B. Remember, A complement, that means all elements that are not in A. Or I guess I could say people, because these are people. People not in A. Okay, okay. Minus, so I'm taking away all the people that are in B. 
All right, let's, it kind of helps. Oh my gosh. You know what I should do is erase everything I've drawn so far. I mean, you, you don't have to do that. <clears throat> but I feel like this is getting, oops, what the heck? This is getting kind of complicated here. Ah. It's hard to see what the heck is going on. So, I mean, of course you can use highlighters or pencils or whatever type to kind of help you identify parts of this thing. But once it gets kind of messy, it's kind of nice to be able to erase and consider a new thing. Whatever you're trying to consider now. Alright, it's not going to be perfect here. That's okay. Alright, let's see. What are we doing again? A complement. What is that? A complement? Everything outside A. Alright, well that just means you're taking away these two names. That's it. So everything that's outside A is all the names except Julie and Sally. You're taking all those names besides Julie and Sally and taking away anything in B. So where's B? This is this set. I'm taking all these guys away. So I've, I've, I guess I've eliminated Julie and Sally because they're not part of A complement. And then I've eliminated all these names that are in B because it says take away everybody there. So now all I have to do is, <coughs> excuse me, list everyone that's left over. Oh wait, A complement. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Let's, let me erase the highlighting. I'm sorry. I think I oversimplified something. Because A complement, I think I didn't quite get it right. A complement, that's all the people that are not in A. So really, notice Julie and Sally are in A, but also Sue, Sam, and Bill are in A. So it's all the names besides these, these guys. I'm sorry. I should have highlighted Sue, Sam, and Bill as well. Those are all in A complement. <coughs> then if I take away people in B, that's taking away Christine, Mary, and Ian. But Sue and Sam were already taken away. <coughs> because they're part of A, which means they're not part of A complement. I'm sorry about that. So who's left over? Paul, Peter, and Becky are the only names left. Paul, Peter, Becky. There we go. Got it. Well, this last one. This last one looks kind of complicated. What do we got here? It's A minus B in parentheses, so we're supposed to consider that first. And then the complement last. Maybe I'll do it in stages. What's A minus B? Um, and you can even list it out if you want, if that helps, instead of highlighting stuff. Remember, A minus B means what's in A, but not in B. You're taking away anything that was in B. So all the things that are in set A are in this circle here, because we called that set A. But if I take away everything that's in set B, I take away Sue, because she's in that circle, and Sam is in that circle. I don't take away Bill, because he's not part of circle B. He's part of circle C. So it looks like Julie, Sally, and Bill are the only ones left over from set A, if I take away everyone in set B. So I can write that out. Julie, Sally, Bill. Not, this is not the answer, because I haven't considered the complement yet. But it's going to help us. Julie, Sally, Bill. So let's see, if I want to find the complement of that, let's see. That would be, remember, complement means everyone that's not in that set. So I just have to list everyone that's not in here. Everyone not in this set. <clears throat> that's going to be a lot of people, right? So pretty much name everyone except Julie, Sally, and Bill. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Sue, Sam, in any order. Sue, Sam, Christine, Mary. And what other people are left there? Uh, Ian, Paul, Peter, Beck. Oh, geez. Ian. Sorry about running out of room. Paul, Peter, Beck. There we go. That does help. If there's a lot going on in something they're asking for like this, there's A minus B, first of all. That's something to think about. But then they throw a compliment in there as well. You can find one thing first, and of course parentheses mean focus on that thing, and then find the second uh, complication, I guess. So the answer is this set that we come up with, not the original one. This one is just kind of getting us towards the answer, not really part of the answer. Um, let's see, so how about example three? <clears throat> Use a Venn diagram to determine whether the following sets are equal. <clears throat> so all you have to do there is draw a Venn diagram of each thing they mention. So here, the first thing is A intersect B union C. Okay, let me try to draw that. Well, they're talking about three sets, huh? so I'm going to go draw the universal rectangle or square, whatever you want to call it. And then we got set A. You can use all different colors, but I don't know. It seems like overkill. Set B and set C. As long as they all intersect somehow. And we're going to shade what part they're talking about. So let's see. B union C. Where's that? That would be... Think about that. It's everything in B and C put together. Put Oh, let's see, that's just B union C. B union C means put B and C together. Okay, so that would be... Let me see, I'm going to color it in, but I'm going to remember that this is not the final answer. 
everything in C and everything in B put together. All this crap right here. I mean stuff, sorry. <laughs> but then we're going to intersect that with A. So what does that area that we shaded have in common with A? That's what we want. Well, where that overlaps A is, this is where my final answer is going to be. This little, I don't know, what do you call this shape? Like a boomerang? This boomerang shape is our answer. Whatever the heck you call that guy. That does not look like a boomerang. Pretend. There we go. Okay, so we did that one. Now we're going to try the one next to it. If the shaded portion is exactly the same, then these are equal sets. But if the shaded portion is not the same, they're not equal sets. Let's try drawing the next one. Um, I probably should have left more room, but oh well. You know, what are you going to do? Here's the universal set. And then maybe I'll use a different color. I'm going to draw set A. Oh, I went outside the line. Oh well, set B and set C. Now first of all, in, in parentheses they have A intersect B. Maybe I'll shade that in real quick. Where's A intersect B? That would be what A and C, or sorry, A and B have in common. That's this kind of football area. Alright, but that's not my final answer. What do I want to know? Is that Union C? Union C. Oh, you can't even read that because it's so yellow. How does that, oh, ah. How does that work with C? Hmm. Well, remember Union means put together. So I'm going to take that football and put it together with everything in C. So I'll shade that football and also what was in C. All that stuff, but also all this crap. Alright, I'm pretty sure those are not the same Venn diagram, right? That's totally different shadings. So not equal sets. And that's the answer. And if you want to remind yourself why, because you might want to look back on this, it's because the shadings are not exactly the same. Um, the same. They have some stuff in common, but they have to be exactly the same in order to be equal. Right, let's try this next one. Same kind of thing. I think now we kind of got the hang of it, but these are more complicated uh, statements here. Let's try this guy. Ooh, that's a complicated one. Huh? I have to build up to it like we've done before. Here's the universal set. Um, then we got A and B and C. Alright, it kind of helps you yeah, to build up. So how about, I'll use yellow for the beginning thing. The thing, first thing I want to do is think about what's in parentheses. Because it's like order of operations. B intersects C, that's what they have in common. So it's this little football here. And then we, let me add one more complication. After I think about the intersection, the next thing I see looking outward from there is a, a what is it? Complement. Remember, complement means everything outside of that. So now I'm going to highlight basically anything that's not part of the football I shaded. So it's everything outside. All this crud. I'm get, making this really messy, sorry. Everything but the yellow. All right, and then I'm going to add the next complication where I union that with A. Okay, so remember, something union something is you just add that in. So I'm going to be shading B intersect C complement, which is already something I've highlighted. Or sorry, something I've uh, shaded. So everything I've shaded put together with something else. Let's see, shade and all that stuff in. Da -da -da. B intersect C complement is part of my answer. I just have to union it, which means add more. Union it with A. Okay, there's, so there's B intersect C complement. If I put everything in A together with that, all that adds is this little, I guess the top portion of that um, football shape. So it's like the whole diagram shaded except that one little section that's yellow right there. So my answer is everything but the yellow. And these sets would be equal if the next diagram is exactly the same as that, where the only thing not shaded is that little yellow portion. <coughs> so let's try that um, for this guy. The universal set is whatever. Let's start with the inner part. Oh, sorry, I gotta draw A, B, C now. Hello. A, B, C. Okay, we're good. So first of all, B complement union C. That's even a thinker right there. B complement is what's not in B. Put together with C. Alright, so everything not in B. I guess I can highlight that first. Um, I guess I'll use yellow. Everything not in B. Where's that? It's all this stuff out here. Not in the circle B. Having a good time. You guys like coloring? Remember back in the day when you were a little kid? Coloring was awesome. It kind of brings you back to childhood, I guess. If you have any little little brothers or sisters or kids yourself, you kind of you could steal their crayons or whatever and have a good time with it. Just don't tell them, cause they'll get angry. Yeah, and then you can be real OCD about it, like me, and say, "Ooh, I missed a spot. Let me get real serious right now." All right, that's beautiful. Let's be. Complement, and then I'm unioning C. 
So whatever I highlighted with yellow, I'm also going to add everything that was in C. But it looks like I'm missing this football. That's part of C. I'm putting that together with what I already had. All right. So that's this portion here, which is in parentheses. Now I want to intersect that, which means what does that that I've shaded have in common with a complement? Let's see. Ooh, that's kind of complicated, huh? Hmm. You know what you could do is highlight um, what a complement. What's an, what's an a complement? And then just look for what they have in common. So remember, a complement, that's when you put, um, when you put, ah, sorry, everything outside of a. What's outside of A? Everything here, all this crap put together. And yeah, you know what, if you use highlighters or, I guess, some type of thing that you can see through, sort of, you can probably see where the overlap is. Let's see, let me do the new round. Yeah, I can't get too OCD, huh? This is going to take too much time. You guys are going to get bored. There we go. So that's A complement. The yellow was the woods in parentheses. And the intersection means I want to know what these have in common. <clears throat> so it looks like putting the yellow and the pink or whatever color together left me with red. I think so. Everything in red is the answer here. So this is the red is the answer. That's where they overlap. Notice the purple, that's only where there was purple, not yellow. And the yellow is where there was yellow, not purple. Or pink, whatever the hell. In this diagram, everything, what do we say? Everything in blue? Oh no, everything, everything but the yellow is the answer, I think we said. And then you, all you want to know is, are these shadings actually equal? No. No, because the second, the very, the Venn diagram on the right side here is missing everything in A. Yeah. But the Venn diagram on the left has almost every, actually has everything in A. So they're a lot different. The answer is no, not equal. The shadings are not the same. It's still kind of complicated, and it does help to go step by step like we did. Shade this, shade that, kind of get, get the hang of it. Ugh, complicated. Alright. I think we're doing good though. Hopefully everything's going good for you. Uh, this last one is a lot of wor words, so hopefully it's going to go okay and we don't get too bored. Um, this one might be a little delicate, so I'd take, take my time and be careful here. Let's read it. JNC Mechanical Contractors wants to classify its project. The contractors categorize set A as... Okay, I might have to write this down before I forget. Set A is construction project. Okay. And if you're kind of OCD like me, you can color code too. A is construction projects, and they said set B is plumbing projects. Okay, what else? And then set C. Hopefully, I'm sorry if anybody's colorblind and you can't tell the difference between some of these. Huh? Sorry about that. Set C is projects with a budget greater than 300,000. Okay. Projects with a budget greater than 300,000. Uh, just to remind myself what, what means what. Okay. Da -da -da -da. And then what do they say? Uh, part A, determine, or sorry, draw a Venn diagram that can be used to categorize the company construction projects according to listed criteria. Alright, so I think all they mean is kind of set up your Venn diagram. You don't have to shade anything yet or write anything down in there. You're just going to draw the universal set, which I guess in this one would mean projects in general, because A is a certain type of project. Um, B is a certain type of project, and then C is a certain type. But imagine the uh, universal set is projects in general. Yeah, I might as well keep the color code going, going huh? Here's set A. Um, what else? Set B. What color was that? Red. Okay, good time. And then set C is green. Good time. Okay, okay. Very good time. Alright. Mm. So I think that's all they want for A. And then from there, we're just kind of setting up what we're going to do in part B, C, D. Or is there a D? Yeah, there is a D. Um, Part B says, determine the region of the diagram that contains construction projects and plumbing projects with a budget greater than 300000 Okay. You gotta think about that. Well, um, is it Yeah, yeah. So, greater than 300000 means you're in circle C. So I know that my answer is going to be in that green circle, or at least part of it. But if it's a construction project that's part of A, I guess I'd want this. And they said, also, I'd like to all the plumbing projects that are part of C, or have a budget. So it'd be this kind of boomerang shape. Because those, those are the parts that are in A and B, because those are the plumbing and construction projects. But you want what they have in common when you C, because you want their budget to be greater than, or did it say greater than or less than? Yeah, greater than 300000 All right, so that, I don't know if it helped, but I'm going to say, I did part A, which was just setting it up. Part B is 
I don't know, I guess I could say it's the highlighted in yellow part. So I might be highlighting other stuff in the coming parts, part C. Oops. Part C now, alright. We're good. How about part C? They say... Oh, oh, sorry, we didn't finish part B. I'm sorry about that. Then they said, describe the regions, region using set A, B, and C with set operations. They use union, intersection, and the complement as necessary. Okay, so they pretty much want us to describe the, the um, set that we highlighted. I don't know, what would you say that is? I'd say that's A union B, because they said plumbing projects and um, construction projects. But they said, but they have to have a budget of 300000 so it's intersect, because they have to have that 300000 budget C. Yeah, because it kind of, the union is A and B because it sounded like it could be a plumbing project or a construction project. That's why it's a union. But it has to have a budget of, <coughs> excuse me, greater than 300000 so it's like, and it's in C. It has to be in C. That's what I'd say. And I put parentheses around A and B because they talk about that first. Plumbing and construction project, and then they have to have this much budget. So I think that would be your answer. A union B intersect C. With, and you do need the parentheses to remind yourself that that comes first. Alright, part C122. Determine the region of the diagram that contains plumbing projects with a budget greater than 300,000. And that's it. Okay. So plumbing, which one was that? That was the set B. Maybe I'll use a different color. This would be pink or purple, whatever the hell. So what's in set B? But they wanted to also have a budget, what do they say? Um, greater than 300,000. So what's in B but also in C? That's everything in this football here. I guess I could shade it in, but I guess I don't want to lose the yellow for part B. But really, it's everything in that football region right there. Let me make sure that makes sense. Determine the region of the diagram that contains plumbing projects. That, yeah, that's set B. With a budget greater than 300000 Oh, that are not construction projects. Oh, sorry. Sorry, oops, I didn't even come consider that part. Let me erase that. I have a purple. Dang it, that kind of ruins everything. Oh, well, whatever. Well. So they're part of that football, but then they said they're not construction projects. So it would be that football, but I kind of want to disclude anything that was part of set A, because those are construction projects. So the, it was the football, but now I'm going to disclude um, the very inner uh, area. So it would be the football, but minus the inner part, this guy right here. That's what I want. So that little kind of triangle type shape that I took away, that's all the stuff that was in part, that is in set A, because I said we don't want it to be construction projects. Okay. So describe the region using sets A, B, and C with set operations. Okay, so how did they phrase it first? They said, um, the region of the diagram that contains plumbing projects, that sounds like what? Set B, um, with a budget of 300000 So it's like, it has to be a plumbing project, and it has to have a budget of 300000 So it'd be an intersect. Yeah, you try to throw the word or and and in there and see which one makes more sense. So if I were to use the word or, it's a plumbing project, or it has a budget of 300000 but that's not how they phrase it. It sounds like it has to be a plumbing project, and it has to have a budget of more than 300000 so it would be intersect. But then they also say that it's not a construction project. So it's like, and it's not part of A, which means it's part of A complement. There we go. Yeah, sometimes it helps to rephrase, so it's saying like, um, it's a plumbing, and budget is greater than 300,000. So that was, <coughs> excuse me, kind of the B intersect C. And there's another intersection that's not in A, or construction. So that's kind of how you can think of it. Think of it in words and then try to come up with the symbols for it. Plumbing and budget greater than 300,000. That means B intersect C. And it's not part of A, which means it's part of A complement. <coughs> I think that works. All right. Now, one more part, I think, in this this problem. Part D wants us to determine the region of the diagram that contains construction projects and non-plumbing projects. Oh, okay, that's kind of confusing, because the word and makes you think intersection, but when someone says something like that, like, let me take all the construction projects and the plumbing projects all together, that's actually the union. You're just putting them together. Construction projects and the plumbing, or sorry, non-plumbing means not in the complement. Ah, that's tricky. I didn't see the non with there real quick. Yeah, if they said plumbing, I'd use B. But non-plumbing means not in B, so complement. 
Um, yeah, so I'm taking all the construction projects, which, which is A, and I'm throwing it in with all the non-plumbing projects, which is B complement. That's the first thing they mention, and then I imagine there's more, but then whose budget is less than or equal to 300,000. So notice, since set C is all the but the ones where budget is greater than 300,000, the opposite of that would be C complement. Well, what's the opposite of having a budget greater than 300,000? It's a budget less than or equal to 300,000. So I think they're talking about C complement there. I just got to figure out, <coughs> excuse me, is it going to be intersection or union there? Um, what do they say? Do -do -do -do. All the construction projects and non-funding projects. So is it like, they can be construction and non-plumbing, or they can be have a budget of less than or equal to bleh, or does it have to have a budget of less than or equal to bleh, and? I think it's an and. It has to have a budget. It's not like, let me take everything on the left and everything on the right, put them together. No, it's everything on the left, but it has to have a budget less than blah, blah, blah. So I think that would be the guy. Um, and let me see, I can uh, highlight that. Uh, what color have we not used yet? It's hard to, sorry, we're getting kind of complicated here. So where are we? Um, all the construction projects, so that's how they start. That's something in set A. Put together with everything that's not in B. Alright, so I think we're just... Okay, I think I can picture that. Um, and then they, they want it to be intersecting C complement. So it has to be outside C. Um, it has to be... Well, that's actually a complicated one. Maybe I'm gonna... Just to be safe, I'm gonna draw another Venn diagram and kind of go slow here. We've got A, B, and C. Yeah, that one's complicated, so if you want, you can go in stages. First, what's in the uh, parentheses there? A union B complement, where's that? A put together with B complement. So it's everything outside of B. All this stuff. Everything outside of B. But the union says put it together with everything in A. I think I want to also shade in this area here that's in between A and B because that's, you're throwing in everything in A, even if it's part of B. So that's that. And then I want to intersect that with C complement. So where does that red intersect? <clears throat> Remember, C complement is everything outside of C. Where is C? I'm going to first shade everything outside of C, and then I'll just kind of visually see what do those have in common there. The red shading and the yellow shading. And that's my answer there. So I think everything outside of B... I'm oh, sorry, everything outside of C... That's pretty much it, huh? Everything outside of C? Oh, no, no, no. What the hell? So I have to, sh I have to somehow on my original diagram, maybe in green I'll do that. Green. Um, shade in everything where there's, <coughs> excuse me, both yellow and red put together. So I'll see. I see yellow and red all in here, I think, in the A area that's outside of C. Um, then actually part of this area where it's A and B put together. B on, in my, my diagram below, it only has yellow, not red, so I'm not including that. Everything outside of it has red shading and yellow shading, though. And everything in C only has red shading, so I'm not including that. But everything outside of C has both. It looks like this. It pretty much looks like everything outside of B and outside of C, except you're also including, let's see, this little portion here. Hopefully you can see that I put a little arrow to it. Phew, that's complicated. Ooh. I think that's probably more complicated than you'll see most problems. It's just like, if you can do that problem, you can do anything. That's kind of how it goes. <laughs> but anyway, I hope everything made sense. If you have to kind of view, especially that example, more than once, don't feel bad. Or if you're doing your homework and you kind of have to follow it along, um, follow along homework with this problem, don't feel bad. It's fine. It's really complicated. This one's too complicated for an exam, that's for sure. But thanks for listening. This video kind of went long, huh? But I hope it made it, made it make more sense. The, the kind of over... And I'm sorry, if you're good at these, you probably thought, man, that was... If you explained that way too much, you could have uh, said a lot less words. <laughs> sorry about that. I just hope that if there's someone that kind of struggles with this, it helps to explain it a lot. But anyway, Al, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Hello, here we are. More on set. If you ever kind of was interested in sets, I think us talking about them so much probably makes it so you hate them. No. No, I mean, this section's alright. It's a lot of uh, logic and... I don't know, you might have seen some of this in philosophy if you took intro. So this section, it's called the applications of sets. So it's going to be... Um, we'll use Venn diagrams to solve real-world kind of problems. Like if you know how many people did this, how many people did that, how many people did both. 
then you can solve it with a Venn diagram. So it's kind of interesting, but you know, I guess you can reserve judgment just in case. Um, so some of these problems we can just kind of solve using methods that we saw in the previous section, but there might be some where we'll need this uh, rule here, the cardinality rule, where it's, what does it say? The number of elements in the union is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in the intersection. So that pretty much means the number of elements um, in A union B, which there's not really a nice way to say that. It's putting A and B together, right? Uh, the co I guess you could say the combo of A and B. Put them together. It's the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements they have in common. So I think we'll see why when you see a Venn diagram of it. Yeah, and the reason is because if you count the number of elements in A, and then you count the number of elements in B, you've actually counted the number of elements they have in common twice. Because the number of the elements they have in common is in A, so you counted them here. And the number of elements in B contains the ones that they have in common. So you've accidentally counted them twice. So you have, that's why this minus thing, you have to take away what they had in common, because you've overcounted it. So that's kind of why, anyway. But that might help us with one or two of these problems, maybe, if we get stuck. Otherwise, I think we can just kind of go for it. Let's see here. Um, what do we have here? Example 1 says, Dunkin' Donuts collected the following information regarding purchases from 100 of its customers. Okay, so first of all, it sounds like um, that the universal set... It's not that the universal set equals 100, it's the number of elements in the universal set equals 100. Because it sounds like they're surveying 100 people and then some of them did this, some of them did that, etc, etc. So it, it helps to write that out on the side. Okay, then what? 65 purchased coffee. So maybe, maybe I'll say set C is the people who purchase coffee. Well, you can call it whatever you want, but it kind of helps to remember C for coffee. So the number of elements in set C is 65, because there were 65 people that purchased coffee. Um, 41 purchased donuts. I guess I'll call that set D. And I'm just going to write donuts, but I'm going to keep in mind that it means people that purchase donuts. And how many did they say? 41? Yeah, and then 22 purchased both. Alright, so I guess you could say they purchased coffee and they purchased donuts, so it's intersection. Yeah, remember, um, and means intersect. If they had said or, purchase coffee or donuts, then I put union. Alright, so based on those pieces of information, I should be able to answer the questions provided, but usually what helps is to first draw a Venn diagram and try to fill in all the parts to it, and then you're going to be able to do go for it. I got the universal set, but there are only two sets within that: the coffee and then the donuts. And like it said in the previous section, remember, as you fill things in, you want to fill in from the middle out. The first thing I want to know is, do I know what number goes in this intersection here? And yet yeah, I do, because they said there are 22 people in the intersection. So I know there are 22 people in there, and I don't know who they are, but I'm just going to list how many people are in each part. All right, then what? Then we have um, a number of people in. Circle D is 41, but I'm not going to put 41 in the missing part because um, 41, let's see, where am I going to write this? 41 here is supposed to be 22, the intersection, plus the missing part. So it's this number here plus the number that goes here is supposed to add up to 41 since those are both in circle D. So the, number, the question mark part is going to be the total 41 minus 22, which is 19. So there must be 19 people in that set right there. All right, now I think we're missing. I guess I'm gonna use, let me see. I'm gonna try to grab a different color to remember. Um, the number of people that bought coffee was 65, but that kind of has to do with this area and the intersection because those are both in circle C. So it's like 65 is the total. It's the 22 plus the missing part that I don't know. The part that's in circle C but not in the intersection. The part I'm looking for must be 65 minus 22, which would be 43, right? So there must be 43 people out here. And you don't have to circle it if you don't want, but that's okay. So we're only missing one part of this diagram now. We have, let's see, what's in C but not in D, what's in D but not in C, and what's in common to them. But the last thing we're missing, that the last piece of information is going to help us with, is what's outside of both circles. 
So there's going to be some number that goes here. And that's going to be something about the universal set. So yeah, the number in the universal set, that's the one piece of information we have not used yet. And that one we can use by... Well, we know that the number in the universal set is 100. But 100, that's made up of everything that's in this whole diagram. So it's like 100 is the 43 that's in the diagram, plus the 22, plus the 19, plus whatever the missing part is. So if we want to find the missing part, we take 100 and subtract all three of those numbers, 43, 22, and 19. Um, so you know what you could do to make it faster is add the three, add 43, 22, and 19, let's see, that would be 84, and subtract that from 100. So what we're missing is 80, or sorry, 100 minus the 84, which is 16. Okay, that must be the missing number, 16. And I think we filled in all the parts of this diagram. So that should help us solve or answer all these questions here. Part A asks us, how many people purchased only coffee? Well, let's see. What part of the diagram does that correspond to? That corresponds to the part of the diagram that's in C but not in D. So that'd be this number here. So it must be 43 for part A. There we go. All right. We got part A. So how about part B? Purchased only donuts. That would be the 19, because that's how many people are in the circle D, but not in circle C. And then part C wants to know how many purchased neither of these items. Okay, that would be 16, because that's the people that are outside circle C, they didn't buy coffee, and they're outside circle D, they didn't buy donuts. So they're in there somewhere. And I think that's it. So notice, we would have had to make, if we didn't make this Venn diagram at the beginning, we would have had to make it eventually anyways. So I think we did good on that one. And there's not really a way to check those answers. I guess just do the whole problem over again. That's all I can think of. All right, let's try example two now. Um, it's going to be sort of similar, but it looks like we're talking about a spa. So I might I might start labeling these things. Huh? S is... What is this talking about? Um, there are a certain number of resorts. Okay, so this S would be, it sounds like... The set of all resorts that have a spa. And then they talk about a fitness center, so maybe I'll say F is the same thing except they have a fitness center. And then the last set they're talking about C is all the resorts that have a children's club. And I guess so. I guess it sounds like the universal set is all the resorts in general, and then the sets F or sorry S, F, and C are kind of specific resorts related to that that have this or have that. I think we got it. All right. And then, like I said before, I think it does help to actually um, label everything. Uh, so when they say, for example, twenty-seven had a spa, it kind of helps to say what that means. So they said, where'd it go? Above, they said, 27 had a spa. That means the number of people in S, or sorry, the number of resorts in S is 27. And then they said 55 had a fitness center. So the number in F is 55. 38 had a children's club. So the number in C is 38. And notice those seem like, and now at first, if you're not familiar with these problems, you might think, oh, they're kind of giving it away, right? They said what's in S, they said what's in F. But remember, like, for example, in the number of the number of resorts in S, that's talking about everything within the circle S. And there are going to be quite a few parts to that. So we you know that there are 27 resorts in S, but you don't know where they go, you know? And yeah, we'll see more, I guess, as we draw the diagram. But what else did they say? 38 and, uh, and C. 13 had a spa and fitness center. So the number in spa is S, fitness is F. And they said and, so it must be intersection. It's 13, okay, and then 10 had a spa and children's club. Okay, so the n number in spa and children's club is 10. And what else? 19 had a fitness center. Okay, so the number in the fitness center and children's club is 19. And then lastly, 7 had all three. So that one you can write as all three of them intersected together. 
S, intersect F, intersect C. Any of those can be in any order too. It doesn't have to be S and then F and then C. All right, so I think it looks like um, they're giving us information from broad to narrow. Like a number in the intersection of all three, that's very narrow and very specific. So we're probably gonna be filling this diagram in from specific all the way to broad. So probably the seven is what we use first. And usually the smaller numbers are what you'll use first. Seven and on and on and on, okay. So I didn't, like I said, I didn't leave myself a lot of room here, but I'm gonna start drawing this diagram. Hopefully I have enough room here. This time though, since there are three sets, I'll have three circles inside. There's the universal set. All right, and you can do it, I guess, in different colors if you wanted to, but I, I'm okay. S for spas, F for fitness centers, and then C for children's club. There we go. So remember from a couple sections ago they said, you want to fill in first the number in the very center. And actually the number in the very center is what S, C, and F have in common, which is the intersection of the three. So, and they gave it, that was the last piece of information they gave us, seven. Um, and then I think the next thing we're supposed to fill out is those kind of, as we, as we kind of go outward, the next outer part. Um, so I could, if I wanted to, I can fill in this portion here that I'm pointing to. That's what S and F have in common, minus what they all three have in common. So where was that? S and F have in common 13 things right here. But 13 is made up of this entire football right here, because that's what S and F have in common. So if 13 is that total, and part of it is 7, the remainder must be 13 minus 7, which is 6. And then we can do similar things for, I guess, for example, this area here that we're missing, the part that C and F have in common, but S does not. Let's see, we know that F and C have 19 things in common, but part of that is the middle number, 7, because that's part of what they have in common. So I better subtract 7 from 19, and that'll give me 12. So there must be 12 resorts in this area that C and F have in common, but S does not. Um, and then what? Then we can fill in this portion here that C and S have in common, but F does not. It's going to be the total 10 minus the inner number, 7. Okay, so there must be three things in that little area there. All right, so now we're working our way out. Now we've used every piece of information at the bottom. We've used the intersection of the three and then the intersection of two of them at a time, all three of those guys. Now if you want, you can just work your way up. What, what am I going to do with this guy? The number of elements in C. Well, that should help me find this. It's, but I'm not going to put 38 right there, because 38 is made up of... Um, let, me, let me try to highlight here. Uh, where did my highlighter go? Come on. 38 is made up of the number that's, that's going to go here, plus this, plus this, plus this. Because the set C is kind of broken up into four pieces. So I know the 38 is the total. If I want to know this last portion that I'm missing, I can just do 38 minus those other numbers. 38 minus 3, because that's part of C, minus 7, because that's part of C, and minus 12, because that's part of C. So it's 38 minus 22, which is 16, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, 16. All right. And then we can kind of go similar from there. Let's see. Um, I've got the number of elements in F is 55, so that'll be... The number 6 plus the number 7 plus the number 12 plus whatever's left over here should be 55. Let's see. So this guy that we're missing right here should be 55 the total minus 12 minus 7 minus 6. Okay, what's that? Let's see. Well, 12 plus 7 plus 6 is 25. 55 minus 25 is 30. Is that right? You can check by it. Do all the four of those numbers add up to 55? Let's see. 12 and 30 is 42, plus 7 is 49, plus 6 is 55. Okay, good. We got it. All right, and then we got the number of elements in S we know from up here is 27, but that's made up of four numbers. So the missing part must be 27 minus the other three numbers that are in S, 3, 7, and 6. 27 minus 3 minus 7 minus 6 is like 27 minus 16, which will be 11. Is that right? 27 minus 3 minus 7 minus 6. Yeah, 11. There we go. Alright, so we got every number, except, I don't know, if you kind of forgot that you have to, you're supposed to find the number outside as well, the one that's in the universal set but not in the others. It's going to go maybe here. Then I think probably one of the questions that they asked will remind you that you have to find that. Because I said the number of people in the survey is 92. So I guess I forgot to write that down. 
The number of people in the universal set is 92. So it should be 92 is the total number in this entire diagram. So I have to take 92 and subtract every number here. Minus 11, minus 6, minus 3, minus 7. Just trying to find, get all the numbers that are in there. 11, 6, 7, 3, what else? 16, 12, 30. Let's see, what does that end up being? Okay, when I do that on my calculator, I get 7. So I guess there are 7 people left over, or sorry, 7 uh, resorts left over that don't have uh, any of those three things. The spa, the fitness center, or the children's club. Alright, so I think since we filled everything in, we should be able to answer all these questions. Part A says, how many of the resorts results surveyed, or sorry, resorts surveyed, uh, had only a spa? You just gotta f look at the diagram and figure out which part of the diagram does that correspond to. That would be this 11 here. 11, because that's the only part of S that's not in either of the others. And then part B asks, how many of the resorts ex exa had exactly one of these features? Hmm, that's a little tougher. So that one, let's see, I'm trying to color code it. Uh, what color have we not used yet? That's hard. Pink, maybe. Alright, exactly one of these features, that would be like the 11 that we used in the last part, because that has only a spa. But also over here, 30 have only a fitness center. And down here, 16 only have a children's club. So those three together would add up to the answer for part B. Let me see here. Da -da -da -da. This would be 11 plus... You don't have to write this out. You can just add them. 30 plus... And what is the last guy? 16? What is it? 27? 57. There we go. All right, part C. How many had at least one of these features? All right, well, at least one. Well, actually, at least one, let's see, where would that be? At least one would be everything in the circles, right? Because all the resorts in here have either a spa or a fitness center or a children's club or more than one. So I think all the numbers within um, have exactly one of these features. Oh no, sorry. Have at least one of these features. Um, so if you wanted to, you could add all those together, and that would give you the answer. Or if you're being kind of clever, I guess you could just take the total number of result resorts surveyed, which was what now, 92, 92, and take away. There are only seven outside, so there must be the total 92 minus seven uh, left inside, 85. I hope that makes sense. Or you could have just added all the numbers within the diagram together. You know, the 11 plus 6 plus 7 plus 3 plus 16 plus 12 plus 30. That would work too. But I think that just seems easier. Uh, taking the total and subtracting the only number that's not in the circles. How about part D? How many of the resort resorts surveyed had exactly two of these features? Okay. Man, I'm running out of colors here. Well, where would that be? Exactly two of these features. Well, exactly two makes it sound like one's not okay and three's not okay. The only parts that have that are this guy right here, three. That has S and C but not F. So it's got three. Also this area here, the six, they have an S and an F but not a C. And 12 here. They have a C and an F but not an S. So I'd add those three numbers together. Six plus three plus 12 would be the answer to that one. 6 plus 3 plus 12. That's 9 plus 12, which is 21, I believe. 21 people right there. And then how many had none of these features? Well, 7, the number outside, right? Yeah. Yeah, because if you had any of these features, you'd be somewhere in the circles. Okay. I think that one sounds good. These are pretty complicated problems, but yeah, it's, it's all a matter of can you fill in the Venn diagram... Um, yeah, and the best way to go is try to go inner to outer. All right, so I have a feeling the next one will be kind of similar. Maybe maybe more complicated, but we'll see. Let's try this next one. So in a survey of college students, it was found that 356 owned an iPad. Okay, well, maybe we'll say I is for iPad, or I is for the people that own an iPad, the set. Uh, 293 owned a laptop. And then L for people that own a laptop, and G for people that own a gaming system. Or you could say S, I guess, for system. 
see now the numbers they give me I'm going to try to write out in the notation that we know from previous sections <clears throat> okay 193 owned an iPad and a laptop so that's the number in I and his intersection L is 193 okay and then what else 200 owned an iPad and a gaming system okay that's the number in I and G is 200 all right 139 owned a laptop and a gaming system laptop and gaming system 139 68 owned an iPad so that's just the number in I oh sorry 68 owned an iPad a laptop and a gaming system I'm sorry I messed that up let me see here where's my eraser So it should be the intersection of all three, huh? 68 owned an iPad, a laptop, and... Let's see. Hello. Where are you? Okay. iPad and laptop and gaming system. 68. All right. And the next thing they said... Do, 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 do. 26 owned none of these. Okay. Now, if you just want to say... Like, 26 is the outer number. Because if you own none of them, you're outside all three circles. That's fine, but if you're kind of curious, how do you write that in symbols? It's the number not in I, which is I complement, and not in L, and not in G. So it's the number in the complement of all three put together. Because you want them not be in any of them. So anyway, you don't have to know that, but I think, in case you're curious. Alright, so I think, usually in order to answer all the questions, you have to fill in the entire Venn diagram. It's like... One of the things they ask you is going to be the last thing you find, so you might as well fill the whole thing in. I'll try to make it a big Venn diagram. Make, maybe it'll make it easier. What do we have? Set I, set L, and set G. All right. So what do we know? And then, yeah, we're trying to fill in from the middle out. So we know the intersection of all three. So that's the first thing we want to fill in, the middle eight number. And then let's see if we can figure out, well, I guess the number outside everything, we can just fill that in, 26. There's only one number out there. Um, so we've used that piece of information, we've used that, we just have these three left. Um, I think that's it, wait. Wait, did I miss a whole line? Oh my gosh, you guys, what am I thinking? I missed a whole line of information. 360, or sorry, 356 owned an iPad, so I missed that. Not that we were going to use that right away, but we would need that eventually. The number that owned a laptop is 293. The number that owned a gaming system is 285. All right, sorry. If I think I wasn't looking at the first line of the uh, statement there. Who knows why? Um, but anyway, now we want to work our way out and fill things in. So I might fill in this area here. That'll be what L and G have in common, which is this intersection here. How many did they say were in the intersection? 139? But you want to subtract the inner number, 68. So what would that be? Um, hmm. 71, I believe? Yeah, 71. So I've used that one. What about the one above it? I and G have 200 in common. That's this area here. But 200 is actually that number, whatever we're looking for, plus 68. So I better take the 68 away. That'll leave me with 132, I believe. And then this number here should correspond to the number in I and L, which is 193. But 193 is the total number, so I need to subtract 68. Yeah, that'd be 125, I believe. 125 goes there. Alright, and this is where I was thinking I was going to get stuck. But then I realized I missed a whole line of information. So with all that stuff, let's see, down ah, here. The number in I is 356, so where's that? But I is the entire circle, so 356 must be everything in that circle. And I know three of the numbers, but I'm missing the third one. So all I have to do is take 356, the total, and subtract all three of those guys. Subtract 132, subtract 68, subtract 125. And you could do 156 minus 132 minus 68 minus 125. Or you could add those three numbers together and then subtract that from one, uh, 356. It's totally up to you, whichever one you like or prefer. Okay, and my calculator tells me that I'm left with 31 at that point. 
All right, now we'll do something similar with maybe the number in L. So the number that's going to go here is that number 293 minus all three numbers that are in L that are already there. So we got 125, 68, and 71. And it's okay to use a calculator. Don't, don't feel bad about it. I got 29. I'm hoping I'm subtracting these right. And then the last guy, the number in G is 285. Okay, so that means that this number is going to be 285. Let me see. I don't have a lot of room. Ah, I'll erase this later. Minus the other three numbers that are already there. 132, 68, and 71. Let's see. I'll use a calculator for that. I'm getting 14. All right, I think we have all the numbers in all the areas of this diagram. So we should be able to answer the questions that were given. First thing they ask is, how many college students were surveyed? Oh, so they want the total number of people. Yeah, I guess usually we're given that, the number in the universal set. But this time we're not. So we're just going to have to add all the numbers here together. Let me see. I'll use my calculator. I got 496 total. Don't feel bad if you use a calculator on that one, that's for sure. No, no shame in that. Um, part B wants to know how many of these students owned an iPad and a gaming system but not a laptop. So I think that's just going to be one of these numbers in the diagram. Where are we? So you want it to be in circle I. You want it to be in circle G but not in circle L. That would be this number here, 132. So the answer to part B is 132. Alright, and part C wants to know how many of these students own a laptop but neither an iPad nor a gaming system. All right, let me see here. Um, own a laptop, so you're in circle L, but you're not in either of the other circles, so you must be in this 29 area. That's the only number that's in L, but not in I or in G. There we go. So that number is 29. All right. So we got our answers. Okay, good. So I think we're getting good at these. And then here's the last one. I think if... It's starting to make more sense. That's a good a good thing. Um, we'll try to do something similar for this one. We'll do our best. Try to start in the middle and work our way out. But I, I like to yeah label things first and then see what we're given and write it out in you know the notation that we're supposed to write it out in. So it says a survey of 500 farmers in a midwestern state showed the following. Well, first of all, that probably means the number of I don't know number of elements or people in a, the universal set is 500 because that's a total number of people surveyed. And then they said 125 grew only wheat. So they're talking about wheat, and then they're talking about corn and oats. So I might say that the set of wheat, people that grow wheat is W, the set of people that grow corn is C, and the set of people that grow oats is O. But you can call them whatever you want. You can call them A, B, and C. But it just kind of helps because then you don't forget what each stands for. So they said the number that grow only wheat. Ooh, so you can write that in words if you want. Grow only wheat is how many? Uh, 125. Or if you wanted to write it in symbols, that's um, the number that grow only wheat. That's So you're in W, but you're not in, what are the other sets? C. So you're in C complement, and you're not in O. So you're in O complement. That would be the way you'd have to write that one if you wanted to write it in symbols. It's not necessary, but it's kind of it's kind of good to practice that. It helps. Um, okay, so that's that number, 125. What else is there? 110 grew only corn. So if you want to say only corn, that's okay. Or you could do it like we did before. And the number in, they're in C, and they're not in W, and they're not in O. So there's that. All right. Um, what else? The 90. 90 grew only oats. Okay, only oats. That would be 90. That would be a similar thing, but it's in O and not in W and not in C. What other numbers? 200 grew wheat. So that would just be the number in W. They didn't really say not in this or not in that. They just said in W or grew wheat. Uh, 60 grew wheat and corn. So that's W intersect C because and means intersect. 60. 50 grew wheat and oats. Okay. Wheat and oats. 50? Yeah, 50. How many numbers are there? Jeez, 180 grew corn. And it didn't say not something else, so it would just be 
number in C is, what was it, 180? Yeah, 180. Okay, I'm going to try to draw the Venn diagram from that information. All right, here we go. Here's the universal set. What are our sets called here? W for wheat, C for corn, and then O for oats. All right, do we know the intersection of all three? I don't think so, huh? They never gave us um, the people that grew all three, huh? All right, so I'm not, I'm not going to be able to fill that in. Let me just kind of take a survey of what I have here. I said the number of people surveyed is 500, but that's going to be made up of all the numbers put together, so I can't really do anything with that. That'll probably be the last thing I'll use. Actually, the next one, grow only wheat. That's something I can fill in right away, because where are the people that grow only wheat? They're in the circle W, but they're not in either of the other circles, so the 125 would be here. So that one's done. Sometimes it helps me to cross it out so I'm not so overwhelmed by all the information. And the number that grow only corn, that would be here, the 110. Oops. There we go. So that's done. Only oats, 90 people would be similar. It would go here. All right. So even though we don't know the middle intersection number, that's okay. We're still filling stuff in. And let's see, the next thing I'm looking at, the number that grow wheat is 200. That's not going to really help me because the number that grow wheat is made up of the 125 plus the three numbers here that I've highlighted in, in circle W. So I know that 200 is equal to 125 plus those three numbers, but I don't know what those three numbers are. How about the number in W intersect C is 60. Where's that? W intersect C is this football. So I know there's 60 things in there, but I don't know how they... How they're made up, you know, how that football is made up of 60. How does it break down into those two numbers? So I'm not sure about that. I think the next one's similar. The number in W intersects zero, O is uh, 50. That's another football shape, and I don't know either of the numbers. And the number in C is 180. Ah, but that's made up of four numbers, only one of which I know the value of. So I think I'm kind of stuck. And if you get stuck, that means you're probably going to use that little formula that's at the very top of the page. We haven't talked about it yet. Um, well, we kind of reasoned it out, but we haven't used it. This one that's in the yellow highlighting area. The number in the union of two sets is the number in A plus the number in B minus the number in both. That might help. Let's see here. So which I'm looking at, which one do we know... Yeah, because in order to use that, let's see, it's number in A, union B. That might be something we can find, I guess, because we don't know any unions here. It's the number in A plus the number in B minus the number in the intersection of A and B. So which two sets do we know, I guess, at least three of these things that we can find the fourth one? Um, Looks like the W and the C, huh? We know, we don't know the un union of the two. We know they're individuals, number in W plus the number in C minus the number in the intersection. We know th those three things, so that might help. Let me see. We don't know the union. I'll leave that. But the number in W we were given was 200 plus the number in C is 180 minus the number in the intersection is 60. So what's that? Uh, let's see, 180 minus 60 is 120 plus 200 is 320. So I don't know, that might help. The number in W union C is 320. All right, where's W union C? Dun, 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 dun. W union C,
You know, I'm thinking, I don't know if that even helped on using that formula. Because <laughs> what the heck am I going to do with this guy? Oh well, it's, it's worth a shot. And plus, I kind of wanted to show how it was used. And there might be a problem where you use it. Um, But yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm looking at this, though, and I noticed, okay, they said the number in W is 200. Okay, so let me see. We know, let me highlight here. Uh, did I get that? Okay, the number in W is 200, so that's made up of all of these numbers here, right? Okay, but what else? What else do we know about W? The number in W... Oh, I don't want the highlighter. Sorry. The number in W intersect, I guess, C. Or O. I don't know. Eh, whatever. W intersect C is, what they say, 60. So where's that guy? Let me highlight just to show, yeah, kind of show the difference. Um, that 60, W intersect C would be this football right here, right? So there's 60 in there. If you think of that as just 60, then notice that we know everything about W except one number. Because we know this is 125, this football has 60. That means this guy must be the leftover right here. So I think I can figure out what that is. That's the total, 200 minus 125 and minus 60. Because again, yeah, there's 125 in that area up top, 60's in the football. The only thing missing from W is this little portion here. And so if we subtract those from the total, 200, that should give it to us. Let me see, what would I get there? Oh, na, 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 na. Okay, I believe that would end up with 15. Because so I have 15 here. And can we do something similar with this guy? I think so. So the number in W is, um, what do we say? One, or the total number is 200. But we know, let me try to highlight. Um, 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 um. Well, the number in, we looked at W intersect C already. How about W intersect O? What was that? That was 50. Let's see. Uh, highlighting. But where's that 50? W intersect O is this football shape here. Not actually. We can figure out that extra piece, right? Or sorry, the inner piece. The inner piece, the very inner thing, is 50, which is the football shape, minus the 15, which is a piece of the football shape. So we're left with 35. Aha, I think that's the key. If you figure out that inner number, that's a key. Okay, I think we're doing good. So now, this number that's missing, that I have an arrow to here, that is W intersect C, which had 60 things in it. Minus the 30, oops, sorry, minus the 35 that was in the middle, which makes 25. So that guy should be 25. I think we almost have it, we're just missing this thing. How do we find that? Well, I'm not sure, but what else? Um, hmm. Da 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 da. Okay, we can find out that last piece by using the number in C. Because we know down here, the total number in C is 180. So this missing portion should be 180 minus all the other numbers that are in C, which, what do we have there? 110, 35, and 25. Let's see, if I take those away, what do I get? I believe you're left with 10. So there must be 10 here. All right. And I think the only thing we're missing, sorry, I shouldn't have written that there, is the number out here in the un the universal set, but not in anything else. Uh, the number out there would be the total number of people, 500, minus all the numbers that are within the circles. So I'd have to take 500, subtract, you know, 125, 25, 35, 15, 90, 10, 110. Let me do that real quick on my calculator. Okay, I think I'm getting 90. So I think there are 90 left over when you take 500 and subtract all those little numbers. 90 out here. Okay. So that looks good. I think we filled everything in, huh? Now we can answer all the questions. Let's see, part A, what do they ask us first? How many grew at least one of those? Uh, at least one. Um, that would be all the numbers in those little footballs, huh? Because you can grow two or you can grow three. So it would be... 15 plus 35 plus 25 plus 10. 
And what did you get there? And that would give you, let's see, 85, I think. Let's see, is that right? Uh, 40, 70, yeah, 85. All right, and grew all three would be the very middle, 35. Next one, what do we got? Did not grow any of these three would be the outer number, 90. Good thing we found that. And then the last one grew exactly two of these. Well, that'd be the same as part A, except you're not going to count the 35 in the middle, because that's three. So I'm going to add all the numbers except the middle guy. 15 plus 25 plus 10. That would be 50. All right, all done. I think we did well this in this section. This section is pretty tough, so if you have to view any of these multiple times or try them on your own or look it up on YouTube, Venn diagrams, um, yeah, you might get some help on there if you're not quite grasping it. But it does help to try them on your own. It's kind of like a logic puzzle. Um, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening.